hypothesis uh, that was put forward on Kali Tribune a few times in the past. And this hypothesis is not proven, and I, for one, cannot prove it in any kind of demonstrable way, in any kind of foreseeable future. But it can be used as a good uh, starting point for thinking and for discussion. Uh, this hypothesis would be, uh, in a most, put in most simple terms, that totalitarian capacity uh, is equivalent intensity of this capacity uh, is equivalent uh, to <laughs> uh, progressive or, as is now want to say, uh, strength of liberal, uh, liberal political metaphysics ruling given society or political community. <sighs> to put it in less abstract terms, the more free society is today, uh, the greater potential for it to be totalitarian, that is to say, totally not free. Now, I am not putting this forward for the sake of uh, amusing paradox uh, to catch an ear of somebody who is thinking about would he listen to 20 minutes of podcast on Kali Tribune or not. I never do that. I think everybody following Kali Tribune knows. Uh, uh, it is simply something that uh, uh, more and more offers itself to a discerning view. Now, as all uh, the general, uh, all general statements uh, or hypotheses about complex and profound realities as our societies, uh, this is not something we can prove. Or not only conclusively, but at this stage we couldn't even give some kind of mid-term uh, theory that can be kind of like uh, verified uh, just to, to prove that this is right. Uh, although it is possible in a sense of traditional metaphysics and philosophy to uh, to resolve the implications uh, that uh, are contained in the principles ruling given societies. Problem with this, for instance, is that you can think that you know what are these principles, but in fact you are dealing with ideologies. And when you deduce, uh, not resolve, but deduce something from ideology, some constituent moments of it, you are never sure whether they are uh, based in reality, whether they are acting in reality or not. To give you an example, for instance, communism, uh, when I was a kid, we lived in a communist state, but uh, to a large extent, uh, that that ideologically communist country was uh, uh, something rather different in many of its aspects. Uh, communism preserved some traditional forms of uh, living and thinking, or even unconsciously reacting to the world, uh, free freezing, uh, freezing uh, past forms of life in time that liberalism, uh, that is to say, let's say this Western ideology, if we are to call it liberalism, destroyed in, <laughs> in a matter of year or less. Uh, so you can never be sure, and I'm not interesting, interested in ideologies, uh, not only constructing them, God forbid, but even sometimes analyzing them. I'm interested in metaphysics, and metaphysics always has to do with reality, even quasi-metaphysics. And it's very hard to approach it uh, because uh, this is something that, that is very difficult to learn in a day and age because nobody uh, believes it's possible. And the second thing is it's very hard to teach yourself uh, the, the methods of metaphysical or even transcendental analysis uh, way because you have to study have to study the sources from at, at the earliest uh, at the latest middle ages or something like that and it's the most preferable thing would be to have a mentor but that's very hard to find uh, so it's it's always more like a work of conjectures that nevertheless uh, yields some insights that can be useful i think uh, so to to start off uh, uh, to an extent that 
given Western societies, let's say USA or Ireland or UK, are in fact uh, moved and unified uh, in, in themselves as political communities by principles that are not that are deeper than ideology, in that sense we can try to apply this hypothesis. That is to say, to apply this insight that the more free they are, the less free they are. Let's say like that. Let's put it like that. Because this is this paradoxical form tends to uh, impose itself. Uh, what I mean by this, I illustrate. In this whole COVID-19 brouhaha, uh, I couldn't help but notice that uh, the harshest measures, uh, the most bizarre, the most police state measures uh, that were applied to quote unquote uh, manage the crisis, uh, were imposed on uh, developed Western societies, USA as Great Britain and such. Uh, there are exceptions, of course, uh, but uh, there are few and far between. And if, if for, for instance, Putin uh, <laughs> gives an order in Russia to everybody to stay home, everybody stays home, it's a normal thing because it's a country that has autocratic, uh, autocratic form of government. And if uh, government is autocratic, that doesn't mean that people are not... Uh, free in their private lives that's something that's something else it's just this form of sovereignty where sovereignty is given uh, to to an instance uh, that uh, kind of can 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 give this uh, executive decisions without consulting anybody that's different thing now we are talking about so called democratic societies that are really democratic not only for show uh the level of of this sense uh, of this um, uh, uh, intensity of these uh, political freedoms, democratic freedoms, seems to correspond to the level of political oppression in the face of crisis. So, uh, uh, the more rights, uh, human rights, you have, uh, the more uh, I don't know identities you affirm you have affirmed in your society uh, the harshest uh, the harsher the measures against you are implemented and this is very remarkable it seems uh, at least at the first sight that people can be managed in these societies can be managed uh, exclusively uh, with uh, completely autocratic, that is to say, to be more precise, not autocratic totalitarian measures. I've, I would venture to say that the reason for this is this uh, unbelievable individualism that is at the heart of the metaphysics, or quasi-metaphysics, that imbibes these societies, uh, and that now uh, hypertrophied into something that is really uh, that is really uh, beginning to destroy itself. So, for instance, if you have, and, and let's see why would that be, and uh, check uh, does it does this conform to our presuppositions? Uh, in the society where I is the fundamental principle, uh, the right to have an I to have everything that goes under this personal pronoun and that this is sacrosanct and that each one is sacrosanct and that society is a collective of these eyes <laughs> or uh, individuals, self-conscious individuals with their personal, that is to say, individual leanings that have to be... Uh, that have to be... Uh, uh, protected by law as a right until they don't infringe on other individuals' incl inclinations. Well, when you think about it, when you have a situation of crisis where everybody, or even perceived crisis, uh, when everybody is uh, in the same boat, 
you cannot control uh, these uh, individuals in any other way but by imposing collectivity on them. Because collectivity in this kind of thinking is just a mathematical quantifiable uh, qu uh, uh, term of quantity, of, of uh, just, just a sum total of principles. Whereas uh, each and e every one individual is a real principle in reality. And if each and, e and every one is, is, is first, then, well, it's very hard to uh, establish some kind of hierarchy. What is good, what is bad. It's good and bad up, completely subjective. Now, uh, this may seem uh, that I am, it may seem that I am just simplifying things here. But more and more, I'm stuck, and I will, I, I would say that a few years ago. But more and more, I cannot help but notice that these very simple and in fact idiotic principles of, of, of a certain metaphysics are being uh, played out to their uh, logical extremes now. And one of the logical extremes of this kind of metaphysics is uh, totalitarian because uh, the society of uh, uh, isolated individuals, isolated in the sense that they are defined by their otherness, by negativity, because I am not you. And I am free because I'm not you. This is, in fact, in fact, the definition of this kind of freedom. Uh, when you have a society that is based on such metaphysics, then the only understanding of uh, society as a whole is understanding of totality. Because notion of totality and notion of the whole, with W, whole, is uh, not the same notion. Totality is some total. The whole is always greater than its parts. It precedes its parts. Parts are understandable and comprehensible only as parts of the whole. In this so-called liberal society, it is not so, it, it is not the case. But, but the whole or totality is understandable only from the parts. Only parts give us real, a real, a real image. Whereas supposedly society has, to paraphrase Margaret Thatcher, no such thing. It doesn't exist. Well, it seems that it has to exist, doesn't it? Now when you are faced with crisis, even maybe to a large extent imaginary crisis, I'm talking about COVID-19, and in this 100% sense imaginary, this Black Lives Matter thing that happened in the West, uh, this is complete concoction. This is, uh, in my opinion, uh, the whole wave of on unrest is in fact, uh, uh, for the most part, reaction to people of certain generation or two for the first time in their lives having somebody tell them what they can or cannot do because of this uh, so-called pandemic crisis. And that uh, it took a month of being under authority in this sense that they completely flipped out. This is how it seems to me that this is the, 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 the real reason for something like that, uh, like these riots. Because... You see, when you take individual as a principle, and when you take yourself, consequently, as so important that the whole world revolves around you, and this kind of social metaphysics does that, well, it's a very demanding thing. Because, first of all, it's not true, it's, it's unreal principle. But the second, it's very hard uh, to maintain yourself, uh, the reality of this principle. Because every now and then something uh, something will demonstrate to you that you are not the center of the universe. But this metaphysics makes you like that. And it seems that younger generations uh, that grew up in, in societies that finally cut, have made a, a, a total cut off from the past, I would say in the early 90s, late 80s, uh, the, the generation that never knew anything else but this uh, simply uh, see this as reality and this is these are in this sense uh, society is virtual 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 thing in a, in a digital postmodern sense not in original sense of virtuality 
so everything revolves about i and as we can see uh, there is nothing to uh, when you have when you have a crisis when you have a state of emergency somebody has to act as sovereign and in this sense in this case uh, uh, sovereign is this bureaucracy and media and in a, in a sense sovereign becomes totality this is very or totality becomes sovereign this is very interesting and very foreboding <laughs> thing to say uh, to to see uh, because it seems like that uh, democracy is understood and sovereignty of these democratic uh, societies is understood as a kind of sum total of this general will or whatever they call it now but it is Rousseau's general will still and that it can it it kind of really start it, it starts to rule itself uh because uh, when you when you look at it uh the the decisions uh, made or for instance uh, about this uh, pandemic crisis are completely irrational it, it seems like they switch to and fro from different opinions on the weekly basis even and that this is a global thing I mean, uh, the whole situation is very serious, if for nothing else, because for the for for, for the grave uh, effects on economy. But nevertheless, uh, everything uh, everything is happening haphazardly, and uh, one has an impression that more the governments are pandering to demands of their citizens, the more totalitarian they are becoming. It is very hard even to, to explain what is happening here. But what I want to give is a blueprint for understanding it in traditional metaphysical sense. And we can see in the future was this hypothesis, that is to say hypothesis that uh, the most individualistic society is the most totalitarian, ends up being most totalitarian, is to watch. To watch will the society attempt to completely uh, model itself towards individuals and when if it does to see whether the method will be totalitarian i am certain it will be i am certain that there is no other way but this form of totalitarianism is something that we still cannot really outline in a satisfactory manner of course uh most of these uh, poli policies uh, from the 90s with political correctness as such are totalitarian in such way because everything is uh, modeled upon this uh, value of each and every individual so for instance you have a down syndrome uh, you are entitled to be uh, a photo model and miss or mr universum simply because you are and you are wonderful because you exist you are conscious individual uh, that is the principle of society this very fact that is uh, uh, that ends up completely diminishing and ruining natural notion of beauty because there is nothing beautiful about the down syndrome this does not mean these people are without value they are very valuable not for those who advocate for abortions because people advocate for abortions on one day on other on the, uh, and the second day advocate this ideal of beauty where down syndrome is uh, uh, considered as nothing whereas in uh, in advocating for abortion they use the argument you don't want a child with down syndrome so that's completely completely contradictory that's will that uh, will that is driven uh, by contradictory notions uh, that are transparently contradictory now these are totalitarian uh, totalitarian principles because they are uh, they are uh, modeling society in such a way the whole of society in this sense totality of society uh, by conforming it to its uh, minuscule minuscule atomized part but there are infinitely many parts and they are different in a way so contradictions start to occur, occur because each and every one has to be somehow uh, um, uh, taken into account
and if we are to project where this will would end up uh, it would end up in a progressive totalitarian uh, movement of totalitar- t- totalizing let's try to to take this term neutrally without moral uh, connotations uh, of totalizing totalizing the individuals and that would mean i would say some kind of anarcho tyranny where you would have have to have uh let's say executive power that is uh, like combination of police media and academia and politics and under it you would have to have this this complete chaos of individuals and groups that everybody is uh, that all of them are uh, trying to affirm themselves and coming in conflicts with each other and this conflict would have to be uh, allowed that is to say you would have to have right <laughs> to conflict only thing you wouldn't have right to uh, is a protection of things that we consider uh, somehow uh, well let's say traditional uh, things that stem from the uh, ways of life that stem from a, a different metaphysical assumptions for instance from assumption that there is such thing as for instance e- ethnicity or or nation uh, nationhood a family a nationhood ethnicity is enlarged family in fact and these things uh, are based on something in themselves transcend individual by themselves so as such they just have to go well of course we cannot we cannot uh, just demonstrate this in 100% way but there is uh, there is a, a tendency in this direction i think that's that's something that most thinking people now see but i would say that this tendency now grew uh, outgrew into uh, really obvious political forms that you really can say that uh, that west is uh, becoming totalitarian that uh, this is not only a thing of uh, terrorizing people uh, via political correctness uh, via for instance homosexual marriages and such things which are completely we talked about it a, a lot no reason to repeat ourselves totalitarian principles in the sense that they don't allow uh, they, uh, they prevent you from using your mind in a natural way and you uh, not only speaking your mind in a natural way, but using it. And this is a very specific thing. No Nazi and even no communist attempted to do this that in, the, in this way. But now you see how by very... You can see at least, I think, uh, by very freedom, by very sense of entitlement to freedom... Uh, you can, in fact, enslave yourself. How societies are enslaving themselves. Individuals are enslaving themselves. It's very uh, peculiar and uh, very, very, very shocking even development. And I would say that uh, the, 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 really the sign of this is uh, looking at 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 consequences of this covid-19 crisis that is still ongoing uh with these uh really really totalitarian measures which we in the let's say not let's say less democratic not less democratic but more like underdeveloped countries don't have in this sense where we can uh, with all the measures they uh, they put upon they they devise to to uh impose upon you things are not uh, in practice they are not they are not applied that much whereas from what i can see in the in the, in the usa or or england and so on uh, this is uh, really completely uh, totalitarian in, in, in the sense of police state in in the sense that you can have a country where uh, police, you can freely beat the police at the one day, and the other day, police can, with no, with absolutely 
no holds barred can can uh, relieve you of your freedoms this elementary elementary uh, civil freedoms and as i said to conclude this has to do and this hypothesis so far is valid only is so far uh, that this is in fact a, meta, a certain metaphysics that is coming to its resolution in a day and age. Thank you for your attention. This was Branko Malic of Kali Tribune.